This is my 1995 Gibson ES335 that I purchased used. Did I make a mistake? It needs a lot. And sometimes buying a used guitar, you can get in over your head. We're going to talk about it today, so stick around. Hey, you're watching Alamo Music TV. My name is Chris McKee. I'm Cooper Greenberg. We're here with Alamo Music in San Antonio, Texas. You can find us online at alamomusic.com. If you're new to the channel, subscribe, turn on notifications, like our videos. If you want to support the channel, visit our spring store link below for custom swag, and, or check out our podcast, The Fretboard Confessional, wherever you get your podcasts. So we've shown this guitar on the channel before. Uh, one of the times we used it to talk about um, broken headstocks, which Gibsons uh, are notorious for getting if you drop them, don't drop your guitar. Um, but I bought this as a, it was a trade-in to the store, and I'd been wanting a 335, but I had kind of had my eye out for something used, something that had some miles on it, something that maybe had a few warts on it that uh, would bring the price down and uh, also kind of give me a bit of a project and also have you know some cool factor to it, you know, maybe some some uh, wear without having to go through the Murphy Lab, you know, the thing that people will spend thousands of dollars. Uh, used guitars often have for free, uh, or it'll bring the price down. Yeah, it's one of those weird things. It's so, the McKee Lab now. Yeah, it's, it's getting McKee Lab for sure. So I, I got it. it. It had some things like this uh, broken headstock. And uh, before I bought it, I said, hey, Casey, check the, the headstock out. Tell me what you think on the repair that was done. Um, and how you know steady you, you feel it is. I think it's okay, but I, I just want a second opinion. And he, yeah, he gave it his blessing. Um, and since I've owned it, I have been fixing it. I have been dealing with uh, the little things that it has. And so we want to. I want to get into it today and kind of talk about what some of the pitfalls of buying used could be. In no way am I discouraging you from buying used. It's more like buyer beware, going eyes wide open, so that you know. Uh, what you're getting into and what the potential costs can be. Yeah. Have you purchased very many used guitars? I think only one, which is my Rick in Backer. Yes. Um, and I'm always like, did I make a mistake? <laughs> <laughs> I really like that guitar. I, you know, I'm back and forth on it for different types of reasons. One of which being, I don't play it that much and I hate restringing it, but when it's locked in, it's awesome. Yeah. Um, but yeah, you know, we always we get a lot of cool trades in. We do trades if you're interested. Some of you have already done them with us. And we like the trade game because we sometimes get access to things that we just either can't get anymore, right. like something like this that's been played in, it's got some years on it, or other brands that we don't carry, like my Rickenbacker. But um, yeah, I'm, I'm always looking at the trades that come in. We've gotten some cool ones recently that have tempted me, but... Uh, Chris has been looking out for something like this for a really long time. Yeah. So it, it makes a lot more sense because it's not an impulse buy necessarily at that point, you know? No, it wasn't an impulse buy. It was, it was, I was looking for it and it was like, okay, this checks the boxes. <clears throat> I wanted something older. Uh, so I didn't want something like recent used. I wanted like an older uh, 335. I wanted a burst. I kind of would prefer figured. So it was checking all those boxes. Um, and, uh, and I, I don't mind something having some issues with it, but, and I'm going to tell you everything wrong with this guitar uh, and everything that i fixed so far, but the caveat to me being okay with things being off is I know how to fix most all of it. Yeah. Um, and that may not necessarily be the case for you. Your mileage may vary. Uh, but let me tell you what's wrong with this guitar first. Um, and I knew all of these things pretty much going into it. So... You know, it's used, it's, like I said, it's already had a headstock broken, so that's out of the way, you know. Um, and it was repaired well and professionally. It's got its nicks and scratches. It's fairly glossy and, and well taken care of. Down here, there's uh, some marks in the nitro from someone putting it on an old, you know, guitar stand that was not nitro safe. Uh, by the way, if you don't know what that means, uh, nitro nitrocellulose finishes which are on gibsons and martins and a lot of vintage style fenders and many other builders even prs is now using nitro finishes on their guitars again uh, will react with certain materials and that includes padding on a lot of stands uh, back in the 90s there were a lot of the guitar stands like we have in the store but instead of this foam it literally was like surgical tubing 
it was kind of like this orangey surgical tubing that was on there, and that would definitely react with this. So that happened, um, which is fine. And so it's got its dings and whatnot. It has uh, a need for new tuners, which I've bought and have not put on yet. These are Grover Rotomatics, and the D is basically broken. There's something yeah. going on inside that causes it to bind. So it'll tune, but it's really hard to turn. What kind of tuners did you buy? Did you more Grovers? Or? I did. I, I debated uh, switching these out to uh, kind of the Klusen style. Yeah. Um, Goto makes some that are uh, relict or new looking. And with the age, I thought about doing that. And that would require some modification with a new uh, drill hole and whatnot. And then at the end of the day, I was just like, you know, we'll just keep it with Grover Rotomax. So... So those are going to have to get put on. I had to do a setup on the guitar when I got it. Um, it's set up pretty well now. You can take a look. But uh, the neck had way too much relief in it. Um, the action was too high. The intonation was off. Um, and so, you know, Feels thankfully... Good huh? Feels good to me. Thank you. So, you know, I do my own setups um, <clears throat> on my guitars. And actually, I spent most of Saturday setting up some guitars I have and doing some nut work on a Strat that I've been putting together and so forth. So, you know, the setup uh, was free for me, other than time for you. It might have cost $150, $200, depending upon where you took it. The pickup's great. I love the sound of it. All of the controls are dirty. Um, dirty pots and all of these that I haven't dealt with yet. Um, it's fun on a 335 to deal with that. Usually, dioxin into the cavity of a pot will clean it up most of the time. So hopefully... Um, that is what I experience on this one, but uh, there's no access. You know, on a Strat, if you bought like a used Strat or a used Tele, if you have that problem, you have to take off the whole pick guard to get to it. On a, something like a Les Paul or, or something similar, you might just have a control plate on the back. That's the easiest kind to, to deal with, but that's always fun. Um, and then in doing the setup on this guitar... Uh, I realized that the uh, the radius is completely wrong on the bridge, which is probably from the factory in '95. And uh, if you if you know uh, fixing that on a, like a Strat where each saddle is independent is pretty easy, uh, this less easy. So, uh, so this, what, do have, what do you have to do? You file the the saddles. And so really, here's some setup talk for you. What you want to do is you want to set your height for your string where you want your action to be with the, um, where the bridge height is. And yeah. then, you know, you want that height to be the beginning of the radius. Yeah. Okay. Uh, in this particular case, all of the middle strings are lower than they should be, which means I have to bring these saddles down before I can like start shaping it. So it's not a big deal. If you know what you're doing, you go slow. Um, and it, it might have been correct from the factory, and maybe the mill strings have just worn um, over the years. Um, that can be a thing. That's so. very interesting. Yeah, so that's the, the stuff I've got to do um, on this guitar. Also, sometimes the case won't let me into it. It's got, a, it's got a latch that is a combo latch, and it doesn't matter what number it's on. You can get into it regardless. Those are such garbage, those, yeah. you know, uh, those old latches. But you have to kind of finagle with it regardless of where the numbers are. Um, the other things are it needs to have all of the frets polished, uh, but it doesn't really have like weird fret wear or anything like that, which is good. That's not too bad. Yeah. So what kind of pickups are in here? Uh, so those are 57 Classics. Which I like a lot. Yeah. Yeah. Those are great. Um, unpotted, you know, classic path sounds. I've been tempted to maybe swap them out for custom buckers. But you've um, got to get the commemorative case. <laughs> yeah, I don't, I'm not going to get the commemorative case. That would just sit empty because I would install the pickups and play the guitar. Yeah. But, um, you know, one of the things that gives me pause is, one, these sound good. And two, wiring in a 335 is just a pain in the butt. Yeah, it doesn't sound like a good time. No. Uh, so, you know, we'll see if I eventually do that or if I just, you know, do the things I need to do and, and go from there. Um, I lost the little nut that's on here, so that's been digging into my thigh. Little things, Fine. right? Um, but for some people, uh, the little things could add up. Um, and really, I knew these things going in, and, and knowing all that, I was like, I like the guitar, I'll buy it for X amount, 
and got the guitar. So let me ask you this. If somebody's going to look at a used guitar, what are the things that you think should be deal breakers and the things that you think should not be deal breakers? Great segue. Well, really, really heavy fretware is probably one of the biggest cautionary tales. Like, you have to be really careful. There might be a Strat or Tele, like a early 2000s that's, you know, on reverb for you know, 600 bucks. You know, like, I can get a $600 USA-made Strat. But if it has really, particularly, like, kind of in first position, you'll see really, really heavy fretware, um, there's a few things that you would have to do. The, the frets would have to be, uh, you know, filed and crowned, hopefully, if there was enough material left. If there's not, then you're looking at a refret. You could replace the neck, too. That's one of the nice mo things about a modular guitar like a Fender. Of course, then you're losing the serial number on the headstock, and what's yeah. the resellability of it, and, and so forth. And, and you're having to pay, unless you know how to do these things, which I encourage people to learn how to do it. Yeah. Um, you're gonna have to pay for it. So frets, and that's that's ubiquitous. That's on electric guitars, acoustic guitars. You you really should pay attention to fretware. Now, uh, there's a lot of times if you're looking online, you can ask a seller, you know, to yeah. take photos and they'll move frets out of the way. Some people preemptively do that, kind of knowing. Show me the car facts. Yeah, show me the car facts. <clears throat> we should start guitar facts. Yeah. Um, so that's definitely a big one. The other things to electronics. If you are looking at um, an older acoustic electric with like a side preamp, I got to tell you, if that goes out, can it be replaced? Yeah, it's going to be costly um, yeah. because generally you're not going to find something that fits in that. Yeah. So the body has to be modified and, and so forth. Um, electronics on an electric guitar, like I just said, some of it can just be cleaned up, but if you have like pickups that are dead, um, that's yeah. costly. You know, do you know how to solder? Are you comfortable doing it on your guitar? Yeah. Um, neck issues is a big one because if the neck, we had someone bring in a guitar the other day that they wanted to restring and I was like, your truss rod is broken. You know, it's, yeah, non-starter right there. Um, you need a bigger repair than just new strings. Yeah, it's rough. Um, hardware is one of those things where <clears throat> it's easier to deal with. Most hardware is pretty easy to change, like tuners. Fairly easy to change. There's some caveats to that. Some sometimes you'll have a Gibson where it's like push in, um, you know, washers from the front, and they're the, they're like the sleeve type, and replacing those can be uh, time consuming and an easy way to chip finish. So yeah. um, you go in eyes wide open with that, um, and of course, if you change things like bridges and saddles, uh, it requires a setup. So you better know how to do them. What about stuff that? Somebody may think, ah, I don't know about that, but it's really not that big of a deal. Well, finished stuff, I don't think is much of a big deal. Yeah. Um, you know, if you have, like I said, <laughs> I mean, we pay custom shops from companies to literally do this uh, to guitar. So if you, you know, see a good deal and you're okay with some nicks and scratches and, and gouges and whatnot, then the, it's fine. The crazy part to me on this is that there's like no buckle rash. No buckle rash. Which is great. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and uh, this may have, in all probability, been owned by a Nashville player uh, that has quite a history uh, with his music career and wore big belt buckles, but he wore his guitars a little high. So there you go. Maybe thankful for that. Um, is it who I think it is? The, was this a, one of many trades? Mm -hmm. All right, cool. Yeah. Um, we've shown some cool stuff yeah. in this collection. Yeah, yeah. There's some history here. So, um, you ever heard of Elvis? No. <laughs> <laughs> He's alive! No. Um, so, <laughs> so uh, what else? You know, when, acoustic, when it comes to acoustics, one of the things to be mindful of that is that acoustics, generally speaking, are a lot more fragile than electric guitars are. And so not knowing the history, uh, temperature, and humidity of a guitar can do a lot of things like cause cracks, but it can also uh, cause braces to fall. And so one of the tips I would give anybody, and, and this isn't this this doesn't work for online shopping. Um, this is you'd have to have the guitar or trust that whoever's selling it to you is being honest or very very good in their assessment. And that is if you strum an acoustic guitar, listen for buzzes. A buzz does not necessarily mean that there's a problem with the setup. A buzz can be hardware related. A buzz can be a fallen brace inside the guitar, which is a big issue because it's yeah. a structural issue that is, again, 
complicated to repair and requires you taking it to a luthier 98% of the time. Yeah. Um, so yeah, that's the kind of stuff that you 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 got to be mindful of when you're you're shopping. That being said, if you learn how to do some of this stuff, great deals can be had. Yeah. Um, but I think there's you know buyers on the used market probably need to have a, uh, and sellers there needs to be like a proper perspective and context. Yeah. Because I see guitars that are like mint and people want the same price as the, like the beaten up dog over here in the corner that's on the same group of listings on reverb. And it's yeah. just like, that's not, you you pay based upon condition. Yeah. If you're trying to price match from reverb with us, it works best if it's a brand new product. Because <laughs> yeah. if our price is off on a brand new product, then we probably have something wrong on our end. Right. But um, there's plenty of times when people say, hey, your brand new D28, there's one that's looking pretty good on reverb that's like a thousand dollars less and that one has a new top on it and <laughs> the binding is off um when we've seen uh, guitar shows we've kind of talked about it. there's been vintage guitars and you know i've said not all vintage guitars are great there's a lot of vintage garbage that's yeah. out there it's just old crap um <laughs> and so we've seen you know split tops and, and retops and the retop is broken and they still want twenty thousand dollars and it's like that's that's a terrible guitar yeah, um, but like looking at this now, there's there's cracks on the binding where yeah. the frets are. I don't care. Yeah, that's fine. You know, Mur Tom Murphy would do that <laughs> in a cave <laughs> with a box with of scraps. With a box of scraps. Um, yeah, I, I would just say if you're looking for something used, don't be afraid to ask insane amounts of questions and get your up close photos and try to get a very clear picture of what's going on with the guitar because there are some gems uh, that we have gotten that are very very cool guitars and I think more people are starting to learn the type of questions that mm -hmm. should be asked um, but also if you have something really cool that's maybe a diamond in the rough that you want to get rid of and you want something else we do trades or we do consignments or anything like that and uh, we have gotten some really really cool used pieces of gear from a lot of people that watch the YouTube channel over the last couple of years would like to grow that out more. So if you have something like this, then maybe Chris will buy it, you know, or well, maybe I'm next. Yeah, and I, and I do also want to say, don't shy away from uh, a guitar that has problems. As long as you can get the price correct um, and keeping in mind what your additional costs may be, um, either paying someone to do it or doing it yourself and the hardware involved. I think, you know, um, I don't think guitars have to be perfect. I think you, uh, there's also a certain pride I take in creating instruments that I have from, you know, various parts or, or fixing thing and dialing it in. Um, and you can learn those things or you can pay someone to do it, but just get a good deal on, you know, that used item first. Pay, pay appropriately for it, I guess is my message. Yeah, absolutely. So well, that's cool. Yeah. That's a nice one. Thank you. you. picked well. Yeah, I like it. I like the top. I like how it plays now. Um, I like the intonation now. Uh, yeah. <laughs> I had some trouble getting the intonation dialed in on this one for sure. And, and you know, it, it's not, people think, oh, you're moving the saddle back and forth. It's not the entirety of the game when it comes to intonation. Relief is, is, is factored in. Fretwork, all of that stuff is factored in. The thing I, I still haven't done just because I haven't had the time is polish the frets. So this yeah. hasn't gotten a lot. This has had some playing time in public, but not a lot because the frets are scratchy and that just bugs me. So yeah. anyways. But when you get the intonation dialed in, it's like, that's a relief. Yeah. <laughs> ah, that's pretty good. Thank you. That's pretty good. Anyways, so if, you, uh, if you're interested in new stuff, we do have a you know, section on our website for our pre-owned stuff and premium pre-owned stuff too, which is really nice. Um, and if you have questions, definitely reach out to us. But like Cooper said, if you're wanting to, uh, you know, part with something, you know, give us a call and we will uh, take it off your hands and help it find a new home and do trades and all that fun stuff. I think used guitars are fantastic. So it's fun. That's my spiel. Yeah, that's good for me. Let me know your thoughts in the comments below. I'd love to hear your horror stories. Um, you know, I've got my own kind of head in hand. Why did I do that stories when it comes to used guitars or working on guitars? That's how you learn. Um, so let us know your stories in the comments below, your experiences uh, with buying used, either in person or online, because, yeah. 
you know, I think uh, it can be very different experiences in those two things. So I'd love to hear from you. Um, and of course, if you're new to the channel, you got to subscribe. That's it. And, and turn your notifications. And, and like, like, like the videos. And then comment too. People like you, they see you and they're like, oh, he liked this or she liked this. I like it too. That's yeah. how it works. Oh, yeah. Uh, but yeah, just keep coming back for more. We'll see you next time.